So, in our previous video, we saw the biography of Marx, the life events which influenced Marx and uh, the different, the zeitgeist of the age, right? So specifically, we talked about uh, the difference between the French and the British Enlightenment and the German Enlightenment. How German Enlightenment also had metaphysical concerns. Metaphysics means something which exists apart from physics and matter. Like questions like, you know, what is the purpose of life? You know, that kind of a thing. So this uh, metaphysical concerns in the German Enlightenment also influenced Marx. That's why uh, later on we'll see when Marx talks about capitalism, he doesn't say that capitalism is bad. He says that capitalism destroys human nature, right? So to say such a statement, Marx should know what is human nature, right? So this kind of, uh, this metaphysical base Marx got from the German Enlightenment. In this video, we'll saw some of the people and the ideas which influenced Marx and his theory. We'll talk about three people, Hegel, Feuerbach and Adam Smith. Before coming to our first influencer, who was Hegel, we'll talk about an uh, enduring debate in philosophy, sociology and other disciplines you know, regarding the epistemology and ontology. Right? Uh, this debate uh, is between idealists and materialists. Right. So, this is the idealism versus materialism debate. Basically, uh, what materialism says is that the only thing that exists is physical matter. Right? So, our knowledge and all, or our perception is all based on the characteristics of material objects, you know, and the way they impact our brain. Right? If we see something, you know, so suppose it is blue in color. Right, so that means the material itself must be blue. That's why we have perceived it as blue. Not that we think that it should be blue and it turns blue, right? Whereas idealists argue something else. Idealists say that ideas exist independently of material objects. Right? It is uh, not important for something to exist, you know, but our brain can have. Uh, independent existence of ideas, right? So, uh, this is a very complex issue, right? How it is important to us in the study of Marx is that Hegel was an absolute idealist. We will see this in his theory, especially when we see the evolution of consciousness. In sociology too, right, both Marx and Durkheim they speak about the existence of uh, knowledge, right? Both say that there is a material base to reality, right? For them, the matter is society, not uh, physical matter, right? So, society has a material base. For Marx, that base is economic production. You know, Marx's materialism is based on economic production. That is what provides the base to society. For Durkheim, we saw it was social morphology. That is what provides the base for the existence of society. So this is the basic debate between idealism and materialism. Right? You can read up on it if you want to uh, waste some time, but uh, it has no further uh, concern for us in sociology. So let's come to our first influencer, who is George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Right. So Hegel, Hegel gave a, a lot of uh, theories. Uh, for this chapter, we'll see his uh, theory about the evolution of consciousness, right, which directly impacted Marx and how he looked at things. He also talked about civil society, you know, and all that, and we'll see that at different places in the uh, syllabus, right? So, uh, let's come to Hegel's idea on consciousness. So, Hegel begins his argument with 
a term sense certainty right? so you have to understand what this sense certainty is so sense certainty means pure experience apart from any language right it is uh, difficult to imagine because our mind has been trained to analyze everything in terms of some categories like you see uh, apple in front of you right then uh, your mind is trained to perceive it as red you know perceive it as a fruit you know perceive it as the fruit called in the category of apple so it's very hard for you to think of it apart from any uh, this kind of associations right but think of an animal you know or a dog right who does not uh, have any of this understanding you know in, in a way you could say a dog has sense certainty it perceives the object as a thing in itself right as it is you know without putting it in this category so for humans it's very hard to have uh, sense certainty right sense certainty itself has no meaning and it cannot be communicated right dog cannot communicate this right so it is not consciousness so consciousness means awareness of something you know it is not sense certainty uh, consciousness means you can observe something from a third person perspective like humans have consciousness about themselves that means you can think of yourself as an object and you can analyze your actions and behaviors yourself right by uh, you know by thinking of you from a third person point of view right so this abstract kind of a thinking only humans have right so this is uh, a consciousness and for hegel the evolution uh, from sense certainty to consciousness is the story of human civilization and human history but there is a problem with consciousness the problem is that the categories you know uh, we make to understand the world are made by us but we treat them as reality you know as a existence you know as, as something physical well, let's take an example right an example i have used previously you know the example of pluto right so earlier in schools you were thought that there were nine planets uh, and pluto was a planet but in 2006 Uh, there was a uh, change in the definition of a planet and pluto was removed right so the reality changed there are eight planets now pluto is just a rock right but did it really change in uh, physical reality pluto is still the same it was then right but our understanding of reality has changed you know so the what i'm trying to uh, make you understand is that sometimes the meaning we give to reality you know the categories we form to understand reality they take up an existence of their own they have a life of their own and they then control us in a way for hegel this uh, creation of uh, categories and explanations you know which have become uh, and have their own objective material reality you know and impose uh, themselves on the material world hegel calls this as alienation so there are two connected terms here right first is alienation and the second is reification as used by hegel so reification is making something real that is in right so as we saw that the categories and the perception human have they make it into something which you know has an existence of its own you know has its own meanings apart from what that object is you know an example is uh, the uh, rose A rose is just a flower right 
uh, it is red in color but it has a symbolic meaning that it denotes love right so if a person gives a rose to uh, uh, someone else you know it is thought of uh, as a greeting you know as or as a sign of love right so the meaning love is not intrinsic uh, in the rose itself right that means if a dog sees this that you are giving a rose to someone you know it can just understand that you are giving something which smells very good to someone else right but it can't understand that it has a meaning apart from that object right so this is reification this is what humans do right humans give symbolic meanings to things which you know and later on the problem becomes that it uh, uh, it becomes it has an existence of its own you know it, be it becomes its own thing the best example is money right money is just a piece of paper right and it is something which humans have given meaning to but it has a life of its own now so reification you know that is making something real that isn't when uh, the human categories and explanations they take up a reality of their own and they impose themselves on the world you know it leads to alienation right we have created something and now it has its own independent existence and people see it as something real you know something which existed even before right so for hegel this is uh, alienation and we will see later on how marx used uh, these two concepts very beautifully in his theory coming back to hegel right uh, what hegel is telling us that uh, he is giving us a history of the mind you know or consciousness for hegel the mind evolved uh, via three stages first is sense certainty then came consciousness and finally came self consciousness which we will see now what is the meaning of self consciousness also hegel uh, for hegel history is nothing but the process of the evolution of the mind and ultimately the universe becoming conscious right and he is also not just uh, you know mapping history he is telling the reason why it changes the dynamic at the back of history the principle for that movement right why the you know things change this dynamic leading to the evolution of consciousness is dialectical in character right dialectic this is a word which we will come again in marx so dialectic comes from the greek word dialectikos which means uh, discussion or discourse right so discourse is different from uh, debate as in in debate each side is committed to one perspective and the purpose is to win right one side tries to win over the other whereas in dialectic the purpose is not to win the purpose is to reach an agreement right resolution also the key to the dialectic is that the beginning state generates its own contradiction right so you can think of it like a, a completely opposite view of the initial stage right and both the opposites combine together to produce a resolution right so this hegel uh, mentioned as the thesis antithesis and synthesis right thesis is the original statement antithesis it's it's complete opposite and both of them combine together to form a synthesis right and the synthesis again leads to you know becomes the thesis and again the cycle continues so it's a very uh, crude way of putting down hegel right so uh, to give an example 
what dialectic means you know like we can take the example of science right if you uh, know the evolution of science initially there was a thing called newtonian physics right it came from the discovery of newton the point was that everything follows laws right which we have to discover you know a rule uh, a equation for a projectile can predict the exact location where the rock will fall right so everything was rule based but then during the uh, early part of the 20th century you now quantum physics happened right physics at the molecular level and subatomic level right so th they discovered that there are no laws for them you know here everything goes by probability you know a lot of things which we do not know so it uh, broke the you know newtonian uh, physics right further we also found out that time is not as we thought it is you know there is a relationship between time and gravity and space right so it totally changed our perspective of the universe it changed our reality right the point to notice is that both of them are ideas the initial initial newtonian physics is also a uh, idea a discovery made by the human mind right in which our world view was based and when we came upon new information our whole world view changed you know how we thought about time how we thought about space all right so that is uh, the and it's it stands at complete opposite you know quantum mechanics stands at the complete opposite to uh, newtonian physics right so there was a very famous conference which happened uh, in the early part of the 20th century in which uh, uh, einstein came and all the you know recent quantum mechanic uh, scientists like bohr uh, and schrodinger they all came there was a conference and there was a famous quote by einstein that god does not play dice with the world right because quantum mechanics was telling that everything is based on probability and it shattered einstein belief that you know god does not play luck with your life right because he believed in newtonian physics you know that there are loose and rolls uh, laws for everything you know, kind of, but anyway that's beside the point point here to notice is that dialectic right this is antithesis leading to a synthesis so this dialectic is a theoretical concept which describes the intrinsic dynamic relationship within a phenomena dialectic contains different elements that are naturally antagonistic to or in tension with one another this antagonism is what energizes and brings about change dialectics are cyclical in nature with each new cycle bringing different and generally unpredictable resolutions the resolution contains its own antagonistic elements and the cycle continues right so this uh, concept of dialectic is used by a lot of contemporary thinkers but we will specifically concern ourselves with how marx used this concept in his theory of dialectical materialism you know later on coming back to hegel so we know that he uh, hegel viewed the evolution of human history as the evolution of the human mind right from sense certainty to ultimately self consciousness right so and it is where dialectic that this evolution happens right so how does it really happen you know what are the steps for uh, hegel initially when we had sense certainty there was a contradiction right that means in sense certainty we only knew the material world you know uh, but there was a contradiction which pushed consciousness to evolve right that means we became conscious through language by our religion etc right when we we use language to communicate our ideas to put abstract ideas you know which may not exist in the real world right religion you know which is not uh, it does not have a material existence right you might make idols you know and all that but they represent something yeah? they represent an idea right so so this is uh, the evolution of consciousness according to hegel being aware of uh, an awareness of being in the world but it is not perfect consciousness hegel says that here there is a separation between the observer and the observed right like in science 
you know the world is empirical you know and human can discover the laws which make up the world right to discover something you have to be away from it you know so that you can observe it right so they say the point is there is separateness you know you are separate from the thing you are observing right so uh, this is the evolution from sense certainty to consciousness right seeing yourself from a third person point of view right from outside yourself so the third stage is self consciousness uh, for hegel self consciousness began with the works of kant right where kant says that the objects and categories we use to understand the world right they don't exist independently right they exist they are products of our mind right so uh, via self consciousness what hegel is trying to say is you know it is the stage when we realize that uh, the things we make do not have a uh, independent existence like money or religion right they are all products of our own mind right so this is the stage of self consciousness and for hegel uh, you know self here does not mean you and me you know for hegel self means the universal self the universe becoming aware of itself right so broadly this evolution what hegel is trying to say is that initially uh, when creation happened you know the initial stage consciousness and matter were both present and one cannot exist without the other right but initially they were very underdeveloped hence the evolution happened the absolute truth of the universe is that matter and consciousness are locked together dialectically right and when the stage finally comes dialect and the history will stop so uh, what we have to take home from hegel's theory is some of the concepts of alienation reification you know consciousness and the evolution of uh, history right because uh, we will see in marx that marx's theory is built upon hegelian ideas you know on his ideas about human nature about reality about dialectical history and consciousness right so we will all see this in marx but uh, let's end hegel with one quote right so, so that we understand how marx used hegel like uh, uh, marx credits hegel you know with uh, you know he was a guide to his uh, studies but he says that you know marx says that it is not the consciousness of men that determines their being but on the contrary it is their social being that determines their consciousness right and hence it is said that marx turned hegel on its head what is marx is trying to say that according to hegel men uh, the consciousness of men determines how they see the world right but marx says no it is in the world they live in the circumstances they live that is what influences their consciousness we'll see you know the deeper meaning of this when we start with marx's theory so this is the end of hegel and in our next video we'll see two more of the uh, influences of uh, marx which is feuerbach and adam smith